With the NHL draft and free agency just two short months away, there are still six teams that need to name a permanent head coach. So today we're going to take a look at the NHL's coaching carousel, some of the dozen available coaches and where they may wind up before the NHL draft. Hey everybody, welcome in to Clearing the Benches, your one-stop shop for daily fresh hockey content. Go ahead and hit your subscription button right now, and every single day we'll bring you in a new hockey video to enjoy. Well, if I was an NHL team president and I was in need of a head coach, I would want to get that taken care of before the draft and free agency. Uh, I would, especially for free agency, you know, it's a big personality thing. And I think you're trying to match up, you know, the guys that you're trying to bring in to help your team. And they've got to jive with the coach. And it's got to be somebody, you know, maybe they didn't have uh, a great experience with in the past. You got to do all your due diligence and make sure that everybody that you bring in would be a good fit for the guys that you either have in your system now, uh, free agents, or future draft picks. So again, today we're going to take a look at some of the dozen coaches that are available out there. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the teams that do indeed need a head coach. And right now there are six that need to name uh, either a head coach or a permanent tag on an interim coach. And we are talking about the St. Louis Blues and Drew Bannister, the LA Kings and Hiller. Uh, San Jose needs a coach. The New Jersey Devils, Travis Green's got the interim tag on there. Uh, Ottawa, Jacques Martin. I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to be behind the bench anymore. He wants to still be there to help the kids along, but he doesn't want to be coaching. So I think Ottawa is going to be um, looking out, you know, outside of the organization and seeing possibly if one of these guys would want to become their next head coach. Uh, some other teams that we're looking at are the Seattle Kraken. They also need a head coach. And then there's a couple of teams that may need a head coach, depending on what happens in the weeks to come. Uh, I'm not saying that I know anything inside. I am just an average guy. Just, you know, this is my opinion. So, um, first of all, the Detroit Red Wings, uh, if they want to bring in Derek Newsy Lalonde again, um, you know, they barely, barely missed the playoffs this year. The Dylan Larkin thing really derailed them down the stretch. Uh, I know they had a good run. They got their money's worth out of Kane. Um, but, you know, I look at some of these names on this list, and to me, some of them are a significant upgrade over Lalonde in Detroit. So if Steve Eiserman wanted to move on from him, he's got plenty of good options. Uh, Mike Sullivan, the Pittsburgh Penguins head coach, you know, he's done it all, seen it all in Pittsburgh. Um, I think they really thought when they bought in Carlson this year, it was going to you know, work out, not work against them. And again, even down the stretch, look at the year Crosby had and look at how he really just did everything he possibly could to get that team to win. Um, you know, Sullivan, if he were to decide to, you know, step aside, maybe he wants to go into commentating, maybe he wants to go fishing for a year. I don't know. Maybe he still wants to coach the Penguins, but I'm not so sure about that. I think if it was me, I might take a break right now. He's a good coach. I don't think he would have any you know, problem getting a job if he were to walk away a year from now. I'm sure if he put his name in the ring, everybody would be giving him a call. And then this one here, um, listen, if, and it's a very, very big if, the New York Rangers were to win the Stanley Cup. Laviolette's only signed for this year, I believe, and I could see him, you know, he's taken six teams to the playoffs. That's a lot of extra coaching. Uh, you know, he's not any spring chicken. You know, he's not an old man. But again, he's got a lot of mileage on those tires. And a guy like him could easily go into commentating any, you know, TNT, ESPN. I'm sure any, you know, Hockey Night in Canada, all of them would be, you know, they'd be clamoring to have him, you know, with a microphone and, you know, talking about hockey on a Saturday night. So uh, Peter Laviolette is a guy that I could see definitely. And again, that's if the Rangers were to win, I could see him possibly walking away. I could also see him coming back and trying to win, you know, if they won back-to-back -back cups. Uh, he's a real serious contender. So uh, I would say, guys, you know, compete level as a coach is just insane. So that's a look at some of the teams that would be looking for a coach. Now let's take a look at some of the coaches that are available. And me personally, if I'm a team 
president and my team needs a coach, the very first guy I'm calling is Jay Woodcroft, the Edmonton Oilers coach. He was 79-41-13 and 13 behind the bench up in Edmonton, and I think he got a raw deal. Uh, I think they kind of crapped the bed there, and they let him go too early. I know that some of the players were not happy about it. You know, McDavid gave him his seal of approval, saying that Woodcroft was a good coach. So, again, if I was a uh, team president and my team needed a coach, I would kick the tires on Jay Woodcroft and see if he would be interested in what I had to say. Uh, next up, and I'm going to say that he's one of, the, like, you know, the hot assistant coach names, Jay Leach. You know, he played a little bit in the NHL. I believe he played for the San Jose Sharks. Uh, in 2022, he interviewed for the Sharks head coaching position with Mike Greer, and Greer ultimately gave that to uh, David Quinn, and it didn't work out so well. And uh, Leach has been up in Seattle. They just let go of Dave Hackstall. You know, maybe he's a Ron Francis guy. Maybe Francis really wants to give him a shot. You know, says, hey, you got two years to take what Hackstall was cooking and see if you can, you know, make it something really good. Um, I would definitely not be surprised if I saw Jay Leach's name come up in either Seattle or San Jose. You know, uh, he's got a little bit of a relationship with Mike Greer. He's obviously... Um, interviewed for that job. So Jay Leach is a guy I think we're going to be hearing his name more and more in the upcoming weeks. And then next up, an older name that we all know, Craig Berube. He coached St. Louis to a Stanley Cup not that long ago. Uh, St. Louis was dead last midseason. Berube comes, takes over, and the next thing you know, they're hoisting the cup. I think Berube would be an excellent choice in one of two places. And again, these are just my personal feelings. Uh, I've heard Barubi lives in southern New Jersey, and he loves that area. I could see the New Jersey Devils giving him a call, Fitzgerald, asking him if he wanted to come in and give it a shot behind the bench in Jersey. Um, you know, he'd get to live closer to home, and it's not a bad gig. You know, you got a lot of superstars on that team that you just got to get them to all play together. I know they got to figure out the Dougie Hamilton injury situation on the back end, and they didn't really get their money's worth out of some of the younger kids this year. So uh, I could see Barubi, you know, he's a little bit more of a taskmaster. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, in training camp, he puts on one of his fights from the 80s just to get everybody's attention when he's talking. So uh, Craig Barubi, I could see being an excellent fit in New Jersey. And, and now, again, this is just my speculation. I think John Tortorella may have had enough behind the bench. I think he's ready to move on to an executive level job. Uh, I think he would be a great fit to stay in Philadelphia. I obviously think uh, he's got a great relationship there. Unless there's something going on behind closed doors, I don't know about with both Danny Breer and Keith Jones. They both seem to like him a lot. You know, talk about three guys with a lot of hockey knowledge. And, you know, you can figure things out in a hurry. And they've got some kids coming up. And, you know, in my opinion, they've got some kids on their roster that just didn't have it figured out quite yet. Uh, and sometimes Tortorella is, a, you know, listen, I love him as a coach. I would take him coaching my team any day. But some of these kids are a little bit fragile nowadays. And he gets in your face. They may not really like it all that much. Um, so if Tortorella were to happen to take a, you know, a position, uh, let's say a consulting title, I could see Craig Berube going back and taking over as coach of the Philadelphia Flyers. That is for sure. And I think he'd be an excellent fit. And I think you would really, I think the, the hometown crowd would love it. I really do. I think they all love Berube. Uh, and I think they would be happy to see him come back. Next up, another old timer, Gerard Gallant. If, and just a big if. Steve Eiserman decided to move on from Derek Lalonde. I think he might go back and he might bring in a guy like Gerard Gallant. They played together on the Red Wings way back in the day. Gallant was a big, tough, you know, a rugged, uh, he was a rugged guy back in the day. and He could throw down and he was not afraid to get in your face. As a coach, obviously, I think he's the same way. So a guy like Gerard Gallant, I could see coming into a place like Detroit where they almost had it figured out. The Dylan Larkin injury derailed them down the stretch. Uh, I don't think Kane is coming back. Uh, but I think they've got enough young kids on their team and good talent that a guy like Gallant could come in and he could possibly straighten them out. Uh, another one, and this is just my speculation, if the Carolina Hurricanes were to win the Stanley Cup this year, I could see Rod DeBod saying... 
Adios. I'm out. Uh, go out on top. Go out as a champion. How cool would that be? You know, he would be the captain of the team and the coach of the team and hoisted the Stanley Cup in both situations. So if Rod Brindamore were to, you know, decide he wanted to move on, maybe he's had enough. Maybe he just wants to, you know, go into commentating. Maybe he wants to go fishing somewhere. Uh, if he were to retire, I could see Gerard Gallant getting a call down in Carolina to see if he was interested in that job. And again, I think that would be a good fit for Gallant. Another name, an assistant that you're hearing a lot of lately, and that's Jeff Halpern. Uh, I think he would possibly be a good fit up in San Jose where they just let go of David Quinn. Uh, back in the day, he played on the Washington Capitals with... General Manager Mike Greer. So, you know, they might have a good relationship back then. As an assistant coach in Tampa, he won cups twice. So Halpern's been around a winning, uh, you know, experience and a winning atmosphere. And he knows what it takes to win. And, you know, you're looking at a really, really young team up in San Jose. And I would think a guy like Mike Greer, if he would have called on Jeff Halpern, I could see him saying, hey, we're going to give you like three, maybe four years you know, really try to get this back on track to at least where we're, you know, contending for a playoff position, maybe even trying to get into a wild card spot. So Jeff Halpern would be another name. Uh, next up, Don Granato, who was uh, the Buffalo Sabres coach this year. Uh, I'm not going to say the players cost him his job, but I'll tell you what, there was a lot of players on that team that underachieved greatly this year. When you looked at a lot of the players there and then you looked at their numbers, you're like, wait, what? How did that happen? Especially coming off the year, especially the second half of the previous year. You know, they were red hot. They almost made the playoffs. They just missed by one point. But this year, I don't know. They were flat. They were giving up a lot of goals. And I don't know. I don't think Don Granado's got like an up and down coaching style. I think it's every game, you know, is probably very consistent. He seems like a very measured guy. So I can't see, you know, there was a lot of screaming or anything like that going on in the dressing room. So I definitely think a guy like Don Granado would be a good, uh, you know, coach for maybe a team like Seattle. Maybe a guy like Ron Francis wants to, you know, bring him in and have a talk to him up there. I think that would be another good fit. Again, I think Don Granado does well with young kids. You know, he's had Tage Thompson, so he knows what it's like to have a superstar on his team. And again, you know, just to go into a team that has some younger players, I think he would bring that team a lot of value. Uh, next up, Bruce Boudreaux. You see him all over the NHL network on, you know, Sirius Radio. You hear him. You see him everywhere. Everybody, everybody loves the guy. He is a player's coach. Uh, he hasn't coached in a little bit, so maybe, I don't want to say he's gotten a little bit soft. He's so friendly. Everybody seems to love him. I kind of have a hard time seeing him maybe being able to flick the switch and get into like, you know, nasty coaching mode. Um, he's always done well during the regular season. He's a, He's been a guy behind the bench. His teams have always had playoff issues. So maybe a young team, you know, maybe if he wanted to go to San Jose, uh, Mike Greer wanted to bring him up there to work with some of the young kids. You know, you're not really in a big time pressure situation. And again, he would be really great with the media up there. So I could see a guy like Bruce Boudreau um, getting a job in the NHL next year. I could also see him staying, doing what he's doing, commentating. He looks like he's having a great job, a uh, great time doing that. Next up, Dave Haxtall, who just got let go. Uh, up in Seattle, he uh, coached in Philly when Ron Hextall bought him in. And I believe that was only because I think he coached Hextall's kid in college. And then he went to Seattle. And again, last year, it looked like they were on the verge of breaking through. And then this year, they had a major step back. Um, I don't know if I would see him going back into the head coaching pool, per se, uh, I think he may be a little bit more of assistant coaching material. I don't know the guy personally. I don't know uh, what team GMs and presidents think of him. That's just my opinion. But I think he seems more assistant coach material than head coach material. But if somebody were to bring him in and one of these teams would not shock me in the least. Next up, let's go back to a really older name, Claude Julian. Uh, he's had two stints with the Montreal Canadiens. He did 10 years in Boston. He was a Jersey Devils coach. I could see a guy, uh, a team rather like, you know, Seattle bringing him in. You know, you got some good talent there. It's just a matter of getting it all on the same page and getting it all going in one direction. 
Uh, Claude Julian's always had pretty good success wherever he's been. He's never really been a guy who went somewhere and was like, you know, out in a hurry. So as far as uh, Julian goes, I could see a team with some younger players definitely giving him a call. Again, I always go back to looking at San Jose is like, you know what, they're trying to grow their kids. Seattle, I feel like they're trying to grow their kids and get into the playoffs at the same time. So they're a little bit different uh, coaching opportunities there. But again, uh, if Sheldon Keith, let's just say that Toronto, it doesn't go well for him. And let's say that they decided that they wanted to move on from him. Uh, I could see a guy like Julian going into Toronto, you know, and he's got a good group of guys there. Again, it would have to, you know, they would have to have some indication as to who's going to be there, who's moving on, if they're going to trade somebody in the off season. I know there's a lot of rumors there. Uh, I believe Tavares comes off the books, so I, you know, be a little bit interesting to see. But again, a guy like Claude Julian, I could see Toronto giving him a call if they moved on from Sheldon Keith. Uh, and then Drew Bannister, I thought he did a good job in St. Louis, so I'm going to say they're going to go ahead and just give him the head coaching tag. I think he earned it. You know, when I looked at the job they did, they came out of nowhere to almost make the playoffs, at least in the last week of the regular season, people were still talking about the St. Louis Blues. So I could see Drew Bannister uh, getting that intern tag taken off him and he being named permanent head coach of the St. Louis Blues. Um, and if not, there's other guys that I could see possibly St. Louis looking at. Steve Ott, he's been an assistant, uh, assistant coach for a long time in a lot of places. He played a long time in St. Louis. I could see them giving him a shot. Uh, maybe David Quinn comes back in. Again, he's kind of like Hackstall. I see him more as an assistant coach than I do coming back as a head coach in the NHL. He's had two shots at it, and it didn't go uh, well for him either time. Uh, then we look at Todd McClellan. He was coach of San Jose and the Los Angeles Kings. Todd McClellan's a good coach. Again, he's used to dealing with high-profile names. You had a lot of guys, you know, Joe Thornton, uh, Drew Doughty, Andre Kopitar. And he he had good success in both places. It just got to the point uh, in both places where it just kind of, you know, the train came off the track in a hurry, uh, especially in L.A. when they moved on from him. Uh, they got off to that tremendous start. And by the All-Star game, they couldn't beat anybody. So uh, Todd McClellan's still out there. And again, if somebody were to give him a call, would not surprise me in the least. And then lastly on our list, we've got Dan Muse. And Dan Muse is a Rangers assistant coach. And he also was the United States men's uh, national team under 18 coach for a couple of years. He's got a lot of familiarity with a lot of young players in the league that are going to be coming up that maybe either uh, are still in juniors or in the AHL or maybe just now crack the NHL lineup. So a guy like Dan Muse has got a lot of good experience with youngsters. And again, if, if, if the Rangers were to win the cup and LaViolette were to move on, I could see Muse being a guy. They've also got Michael Pekka as an assistant coach. Uh, he's done a really good job this year as well. Uh, I could see either of those guys getting a call. So uh, that's going to do it for today in the NHL coaching carousel. Look, uh, we looked at about a dozen coaches that are out there. We looked at some teams that need coaches. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section. If any of these teams you think are going to hire any of these coaches, if you could hit your subscription button, you want to hit the like button, you want to share it. And as we always do here, clearing the benches, especially in the playoffs, let them know you're out there.